Sarah Garethy is our state political reporter. Good afternoon. Hey, Richard, how are you? Yeah, good. Now, there's been a, an emotional day in state parliament today as MPs debate a Greens bill that would allow voluntary euthanasia in New South Wales. It has been. It's always um, a very emotional day in the upper house on issues like this because, of course, um, both sides have been given a conscience vote. So people um, are free to you know, vote which way they choose and often uh, speak of very personal experiences when it comes to these sort of issues, which you know obviously can be um, very personal and, and ethically thorny as well. So uh, we had several, several upper house MPs actually actually in tears today as uh, they recounted either their own experiences or, or those of their constituents. Uh, one of the most moving uh, tales, I guess, was from the Nationals MP, Trevor Khan, who described a very long and agonising death of his father. Uh, and his father basically um, had cancer and also had a, a massive stroke and was in a nursing home and had actually asked Trevor Khan to kill him. And Trevor Khan obviously uh, was very emotional as he spoke about this. He said that he hadn't been able to do it um, but he always wondered whether he'd let his father down. And interestingly, he said that he uh, came with a lot of baggage to this debate because of that, but he couldn't bring himself to vote either for or against the bill, so he's actually going to abstain when it does come to a vote. He, uh, he, he couldn't actually get a position on this, so it just shows how, uh, how tricky it is and, and uh, how difficult mm. it is as an issue for a lot of MPs. It is difficult, isn't it? And it's one of those issues where... The view of parliamentarians is, seems to be quite different to the view of the general population where there is a lot of support for euthanasia. Well, yeah, I mean, the Greens MP, Kate Behrman, who has introduced this bill, says that uh, when surveyed, 85% of the population agrees with euthanasia under the kinds of terms that are uh, in this particular legislation. So, obviously, it's got a fair amount of checks and balances built, built into it. Um, but I think when it actually comes to you being a legislator and having to make that decision, then uh, you do take a very close look at this. And if, for that uh, matter, we had another MP, Labor's Walt Secord, who said that he previously supported the idea of uh, euthanasia, the concept of euthanasia, but when he was a staffer for the Federal Ageing Minister, he just saw uh, so much of the sort of dynamics that can go on with older people mm -hmm. and families, and, and that actually changed his mind, and now he, he, uh, he's voting against the bill. Um, he just doesn't think that it can be legislated in enough, uh, with enough checks and balances to make sure that it's not exploited. Mm. So it is really... I must say, that's always what troubles me about, and I understand the emotional arguments, and I haven't been through... You know exactly the sort of horrors that uh, that those people were talking about today, but it it, it does concern me that somebody, if it becomes a, a kind of normal thing to do in in these circumstances, that people might feel a, a terrible pressure not to let their family down by living on. You know they'll feel oh well, and, and almost especially people who are not egomaniacs, they've maybe spent their whole life kind of waiting on their family. You know hand and foot, and, uh, and their main thing in their life is to try to, you know, make things better for their family. And they think, oh, I'm a trouble. That was, uh, I'm yeah. a nuisance to people. Uh, if I died now, then there'd be a bit more money in the inheritance for them. And, and they'll feel this almost pressure to do so. That was certainly some of the arguments that people like Waltz Accord were making, that, you know, people can feel a burden, a financial burden or an emotional burden, and, uh, you know, feel, feel that uh, they should perhaps do this when they're not quite ready and it's not uh, quite where their head's at. But of course on the other side, uh, you know, you do have these horrible stories about people dying, such undignified mm -hmm. deaths. Yeah, and yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah terrible stories. The other yeah. side of the argument is, you know, very persuasive as well. So you sort of, it, you know, it makes it a, no wonder that MPs have such difficulties making up their mind. And I think in this case particularly, they've received a lot of uh, feedback from individuals in their own electorates as well, uh, arguing very strongly both for and against uh, uh, this bill. Mm. So uh, it is a really definitely a tricky decision. We're not going to see a vote on it today. Uh, it's unlikely, but uh, but I'd say um, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. It, it probably doesn't have the numbers to get up, but certainly uh, you know a number of people feel very strongly right. about voting. And even if it did get up, what would be the situation in terms of the feds? Because of course the national, the, the uh, Northern Territory got up a bill, didn't they? But then they got stomped on. Well, I guess it's yeah. It's a matter of it depends on what what they choose to do with it and whether it gets challenged in the, in the High Court mm. and all those sorts of things. So it is a little bit uncertain as to what would happen. But um, obviously we've seen overseas various states legislating in favour of it. Oregon's the, uh, the most obvious example. Um, so whether or not, it depends on what position the, the federal government takes on it and, and whether anybody challenges it in the High Court, of mm. course, as well. It's interesting, isn't it, that it may be very unusual for you as a political reporter to see the parliament really engaged like this, of people really debating intellectually and morally with themselves and consult there's obviously been a lot of consulting with, with constituents and then these speeches in parliament. It's, uh, it's in a way the parliament at its best, isn't it? It 
is. I mean, it is always parliamentarians in these sorts of situations do often show a very different side. You know, they show the torture that sometimes comes behind these decisions when they have to make these difficult decisions, and they they do reveal a little bit of uh, what goes on before they actually go in and make that vote. And that's you know one of this is one of the occasions when you do get that, and you do tend to get that every time there's a, a conscience vote. A gay marriage, you know, was a similar one when the upper house had a motion in support of gay marriage. We had some very personal stories being told and some very emotional scenes. Um, so it's always it is always interesting just to see that different side of, of, of politicians and uh, where they're coming from. Yeah, Sarah, good on you. Thank you. Thanks, Richard. Uh, Sarah Geraghty, uh, state political reporter, one three hundred triple two seven.